G'day guys, how's it going? Now, as you may or may not know, I've just purchased myself this Samsung Galaxy S6 to be my new daily driver phone. One of the main issues though that I've always had with the Samsung lineup of phones, and I think there's a lot of people who agree with me on this one, is their touch with software. It's kind of clunky, it can even slow down your phone, and I think we all agree that it just doesn't look as nice as stock Android. Now, obviously Samsung has come a long way in reducing this kind of overwhelming impact that TouchWiz does have on the Samsung phone with their S6 lineup, but secretly I think we all wish that we could just run stock Android on our Samsung devices without having to root it. There is a way, kind of. So let's just take a look and I'll show you how to make your phone look kind of like stock Android. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the Samsung theme store. Now you can get there a few ways. You can either click and hold and you can click on themes there or you can go to your inbuilt settings and if it's not in your quick settings, just come down to personal and there's themes there. Now I'm running Lollipop 5.1.1 so it might look a little bit different here but whether or not the link's up here or down here, just go to the theme store and then we wanna come over to all and what we're looking for is a theme called material design. Now I believe that it's down in the 30s now, because there's been a few that have been released since then. So we're just gonna find it. And here is material design. So we're gonna click on that and we're gonna hit download. All right, so then it'll say installation complete and we're just gonna hit apply. And then apply again, and it will apply the theme. And once it's done that, it'll bring us back to the home screen. The first thing you'll notice is that the wallpaper has obviously changed. We've got a couple of different icons and the folders look a bit different. The app list, I think that looks the same. Um, but yeah, things like the messages have changed. So we've got a you know, more material design look here. And if we just jump into my voicemail messages, you can see that, uh, yeah, there's, you know, it's got that light, nice material design look about it. And also the dialer, if we jump into the phone here, that's got a material design look about it and the contacts look the same as well. So the other thing that's changed is the notification panel. So you can see it's got that nice dark color palette to it, much like stock Android or Cyanogen Mod 12. Um, you know, it's obviously still touch with, so you swipe across and you've got your toggles there, but that's a really cool looking thing about it. And the other thing that's changed is the keyboard. So if we jump in here, you can see the keyboard's got now much more of a stock Android look about it. And we can just install the Google Now keyboard if we want, and I have got that installed. So if I jump up to settings and come down to language and input and change the default keyboard to Google keyboard, and then I'll just jump back in. You can see now, this is the Google Now keyboard. This is what you get on stock Android. And they do look quite similar. You know, there are a couple of differences. So you can do that. And I'll have the link to the Google Now keyboard below in the description. Okay, the next thing that I'm gonna show you is Nova Launcher. So if we jump into Play Store, and I'm gonna look up Nova Launcher, which I've already got in my recently searched. And I've already got it installed, obviously. So just come to Nova Launcher and you can get the free version. It's, it does the job. It's just like any other launcher. It's got all the capabilities. Uh, the paid version has a few other things and I'll talk about that in a second. But if we just open that up, you can see that it kind of looks similar, but you'll notice when I click on folders, it's got that white background and that circle animation. And the same thing with the app list. Um, you know, it's got that circle animation. So. That's pretty cool, that's more like stock Android obviously. And if we just jump into Nova settings, first thing that I'm gonna do, just for the sake of this video, is I'm gonna to come to d default home and I'm gonna make sure that Nova Launcher is selected as the default home. And what you can do is you can actually come to look and feel and you can change your icon theme. So you can either have system or you can install something from the Play Store or you can select Lollipop. So if I select Lollipop and then go back to the home screen, you can see that the icons are lollipop style and I'm pretty sure that it already had that selected so probably nothing's changed there. Now obviously you can still change your wallpaper by clicking and holding, you've got wallpapers, widgets and other settings. If we just jump into settings, you can see I've got the paid version as I said before and one of the things that comes with the paid version is gestures and inputs. Now this is really cool, the main gesture that I use is I swipe down anywhere and it brings down my notification panel. So this makes it really one-handed friendly for when you're accessing your toggles and also your notifications to swipe them away. So that's a really cool feature. And there's a couple of other things that come with the paid version as well, such as unread notification badges. So that little you know red thing with the number one in it or whatever, and I really rely on that. So those are the two main reasons that I got the paid version and they're worth it to be honest. 
Okay, so the next and final thing that I'm gonna show you is how to change your lock screen to look a bit more like stock Android. Now, obviously any custom lock screen that we use isn't gonna be as reliable as the Samsung default lock screen, which is a shame because I don't really like this clock being up here top left. I wish it was in the center more like stock Android. But unfortunately with custom lock screens, um, I've always run into one issue or another that proves to be pretty major. They're never, they're never really minor issues, they're always usually major issues. Whether or not that's you know, the app being less secure, so you, know, you, can, you can hit the uh, recent apps button and it actually just shows up as an app, or maybe it doesn't have the fingerprint sensor or shortcuts aren't that good or whatever. There's always been some sort of issue with a custom lock screen. Regardless, I'm gonna show you this one and um, you know, maybe it'll do the trick for you and that's all you want. Um, but for me, I always find myself going back to the, the default Samsung lock screen. All right, so let's jump in and I'm gonna to come to the Play Store and the first one that we want is called Snap Lock. And there it is. So I've already got it installed. And once you install it, it'll ask you to do a couple of initialization settings. So we're gonna go, I'm firstly gonna turn it on. Okay, so this is the lock screen. now. Just before we jump in, I'm gonna to have to go into the app again, and we're gonna to have to do some initialization settings. So you wanna, if it doesn't come up automatically, you wanna to come to preferences, come down, and then it's just down the bottom here, initialization settings. I'm gonna turn on notification permissions. Turn that on, okay. Back we go. Turn off system screen lock. So I'm gonna turn our default Samsung lock screen off by hitting none and then turn on usage access permission. And we'll just click that there and we'll just jump back. Now, everything should be fine now. We just wanna make sure that uh, it's on. Let's lock the phone and there it is. So this is what it looks like. This is, you know, it's got that stock Android look, clock in the center, date just below it. And it's got a quick camera app shortcut here as well. If I slide up, there it is. So reasonably quick as well into the camera app. Now, one thing I'll say about Snap Lock is that it seems to be flawless in terms of when you unlock your device, it's, there's never any hesitancy in showing the lock screen. With other lock screen apps, you know, if it's really quick that I've locked and unlocked my device, it'll show the home screen for a bit and then it'll go to the lock screen. Whereas with Snap Lock, that has never been an issue. So that's really good. But I think there's actually a negative side effect to that. Whatever kind of setup they've used to make sure that that doesn't happen so that it's flawless like that, it's actually kind of locks your device a little bit so that you know I can't double click the home button and go to the camera. And actually in the morning I've set an alarm and woken up and this has been awake and it's shown the clock here, but it's just the lock screen. There's no alarm or anything. And then I'll have to unlock my device and the alarm app will appear underneath it. So it's a really weird issue. It's kind of an issue for me, meaning I can't really use it. But you know what, it's probably not the biggest issue. This is the most flawless lock screen app that I have come across and that I've used. Um, I've used other ones like AC Display and a few other different ones and they all just do that issue where if you're really quick at locking and unlocking your device, it'll show up with the home screen and then the lock screen will appear after that. Whereas, um, you know, Snap Lock is flawless at that. So that's the first one that I wanted to show you. Now I wanna show you one more because the thing with Snap Lock is that the notifications don't actually appear with those normal white lollipop strips. They appear in their own little way, which I like, but you might not like that if you're trying to make your phone look like stock Android. So I'm just gonna show you one more. So if we come up to Play Store and we type in lollipop lock screen, and this top one we're gonna install. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I haven't used this one for an extended amount of time. So I can't really tell you the reliability of it. Um, I think it's a little bit unreliable, so that's why I haven't used that much. And it doesn't have that great a rating in the Play Store. So just be aware of that. But in saying that, it does look a lot like stock Android. So if we open that up and we open our notification settings, we'll do this, turn that on, okay. Okay, so come back and obviously our system screen lock is off. This is where you can choose a camera app shortcut. I'm gonna skip that step and then we're gonna open the lock screen. So let's have a look at it. So here you can see, it looks pretty much exactly like you know stock Android. Now it doesn't obviously, the clock doesn't get smaller as you drag it up, but you've got your notifications here. You've got your quick shortcuts, but they don't appear. Um, so let's have a look at, looks like it doesn't even work. So. You see, that's the issue I'm talking about with these sort of lock screens is that they show whatever you were doing before um, to be, you know, they show whatever you were doing before. So, you know, it, watch this. If I lock it and then unlock it, there's the home screen. And then let's see if it ever shows up, who knows. 
There it is. So, you know, that's the thing. They, all the lock screens apart from snap lock have that issue about them, which is really annoying. But this one does look a lot like stock Android. So if you're happy for that sort of issue to, to come about once or twice, then, you know, then go ahead and use this one. Okay, guys, so that's it. That, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful as well. You know, hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, I will see you in the next video.